friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. However, I'm on the dark side today, doing some metal working projects. Mostly I've been cleaning up the shop, that's how I got so dirty already. And that was just cleaning up enough room so that I could make room to work on what I need to work on. <laughs> it's, it's always a mess over here. Uh, so many people use this shop. My son was in here last night welding till probably 10.30 or 11 o'clock last night. You, know, you heard me mention uh, that I'm working on my wife's horse trailer, or actually, technically, she's been working on the horse trailer. She's been stripping it down, taking it all apart, you know, and I kind of wish we would have taken a before picture. If, if she took one and I have one, I'll put that in the video so that you can see the before. So in the previous video where I mentioned about the horse trailer, someone made the comment that I can't wait to see Jerry go OCD on the horse trailer. Yeah, I guess he knows me pretty well. <laughs> this is actually one of the doors off the back of the horse trailer. There's two doors side by side. This door was really rusted bad, especially across the bottom here. So what I've done is, uh, you know, ground it off smooth and then TIG welded all the holes back. I just want to back up and tell the story on this so you'll understand. I knew it was a piece of junk when we bought it. There was an 80-some year old lady that owned it, a good friend of my wife's, and she's getting out of the business because of her age, obviously. So the horse trailer had just gone in the toilet for the last 10 or 12 years, I'm sure, maybe longer. She, you know, wasn't able to keep up with it. It rusted out really bad, and it had been repaired many times prior and those repairs were I guess for the best term I could come up with would be a farm fix they just were patch this patch that throw this brace on there etc and so forth it was really done very poorly I just thought let's just buy it from her and help her out because nobody's gonna buy that pile of crap <laughs> that's really what it was it was just a pile of crap I think she was asking 600 we gave her her 600 no questions asked scrap value it's probably worth a few hundred anyways so we didn't get screwed too bad just on the scrap value well my wife if you think I go OCD she's gone farther than that she's already bought new tires for it. and I kept telling her I said you know we don't even know we're gonna get this thing fixed so quit spending all that money but she did it anyway you know how she just goes forward you know there's no <laughs> there's no throttle it <laughs> just full speed ahead so anyway, she has done a good job of cleaning it up and she's taken all the paint off of it and ground, ground it down and... She... It's just, but it's still, I mean like now is about where the work starts really. I mean she's done a ton of work on it, don't get me wrong, but there's two more tons of work to be done yet. And I'm just working on this back trailer door. And like I said, this trailer door was rusted really bad. I took a TIG welder, and I'm not a good welder, by the way. I'm an okay arc welder, and I say okay like average at best. And I'm really referring to average farm welder, not, a, not an average professional welder, okay? So I, I can get a decent bead, and I can get things to stick, and, and I'm sure they're not going to break, and so forth. So that part of it I'm okay with. But when it comes to TIG welding, that's brand new to me. But I did, you know, kind of practice on these because they had holes all through it. And I filled all the holes in with TIG weld and then I ground them down. And, and I think I'm doing, getting the knack of it, getting the hang of it. Because there's going to be a bunch of TIG welding needed on this trailer in order to fix it. A lot of the sides are thin sheet metal. And when I say thin, they're, they're fairly heavy for sheet metal. But, uh, but still in all, it's thin metal. So it's... You could probably electric weld it with either a MIG or with my uh, stick welder, but you know it, it would be a better job with the TIG, and that's what I plan to do. You know, basically we just bought it to help the lady out. Now we're stuck with it. So, you know, I'm looking at this trailer door, and it, and I knew it was bowed in a little bit, but it's not a little bit. It's a lot. 
but let's just measure how much it's, it's canted in. So that's roughly 34 and 15 sixteenths. And if I measure it up here, it's uh, 30 and 3 eighths. So <laughs> it's, it's canted in four inches at least. I mean, seriously, it's, these are not 90 deg degree at all. You can tell it just by looking. How they even opened it up enough to get the boards down in here, I don't know. So I'm gonna just cut this right here, bend it back out, and then re-weld it. Because this is this one's really bad. I This one is probably bad too. So I just thought I would show you how bad this is so you know I'm not really just going OCD. So you can see here that just lining this up with the bottom, this upright touching right here at 16 inches is out by almost a full inch. It's probably seven eighths of an inch anyway. And that's just in 16 inches. Now most of the time that would be all you'd need to do and you could just pull this back. But we're not that lucky because it's got another piece of angle on the other side. This one's made different, so I don't, you know, I can't really 45 it. It won't do me much good. So I guess I'll just cut it right along this bottom joint. Yeah, I can open it up now. So now I should at least be able to get it opened up to square. I'll put a few tacks on that and weld it back up square. Well, I've got the welders turned on, so there's a lot of extra noise. But you can see here this big gap. I have this set at 90, and in that gap, I just filled, I just ground off a piece of nail here, just a 16-penny nail to fill that gap. I've got the amperage turned up to about 75 amps on my uh, Harbor Freight Pro TIG 200. That should be plenty good for a uh, trailer door. Uh, you know, I probably should have allowed a little bit. I knew it was going to pull back in a little bit. It's about a, oh, a strong eighth off now. But, you know, compared to an inch, that's not too bad. And, you know, it'll open back up. I can push it open enough to get my panel in there, no problem. I hadn't gotten around to checking this side, but you can see it's off by, oh, almost a full half inch, it, probably 7 sixteenths at least. I think I may just go ahead and do the same thing to this one, and this one I'll allow a little bit this time, and that way it won't close up on me. As you can see, we have a large sheet, piece of sheet steel here. It just so happens, very fortunate, that our neighbor is a scrap dealer and he deals in all kinds of scrap metal and anyway he had two big sheets of this stuff laying around it's just about exactly the right thickness it's actually maybe even a hair thicker than what the trailers made out of and when i say a hair i mean just a few thousands thicker so that's a good thing that it's actually sturdier metal than what there was on there originally so i'm going to cut out the two doors now and get them ready to put in I, I couldn't reuse the old steel because it was all rusted out. It was really bad. I'm going to use my plasma cutter. This is a cheapie I bought off of eBay, but it seems to work pretty well. I, for the very first time, just replaced all the consumables up in the tip, and I made this little wire deal to go around here to try to hold me at a steady distance and everything to cut this off. So anyway, we'll see if it works. I don't even know if it's going to. really doing well. My visor's so dark I can't see what I'm doing. Wow, that did a nice job. I mean, it really cut it nice. Got one little spot here where I held on where I moved it there. Did a very nice job. Might be a corner right there, but other than that, it's loose. Just a little tiny corner right there in the corner where I couldn't get. To. 
just enough to be aggravating. There it is, it came loose. So that really worked nice. Boy, I mean, it just cut it almost like a knife. I've got the plate inserted into the door. It's all been pressed in level. I've got some wedges on the back side that you can't see pushing the plate up against the front of the frame. And that cross brace that goes through right there is so that it holds it at the right width at the top. It's a little narrower at the top than it was down here and now it's perfectly square. So we're about ready to tack weld it in place. Okay, that ought to hold it in place and keep it relatively square. Now I can go around with the clamps in certain places and just stitch weld it all the way around. It's, it won't be a solid weld. Well, you can see we've got the plywood insert in there. This is the horse side right here. And this is the steel side right here, as you can see. And it's sti it's stitched on there you know I just I just have this cap sitting on here at the moment so the cap has not been welded on yet and I'm just thinking about it a little bit before I weld it on there you know after you weld this on there you can't get the wood back out this is marine plywood we bought uh, you know the be the better stuff I had to more or less dado out uh, around the edges so that it would fit in there the uh, new steel we bought is just a hair thicker than the old steel, so I think that probably made up the difference, and that's why we had to uh, score the plywood all the way around. This lip that goes all the way around is missing down here. I noticed that after I put the plywood in, I, did, I forgot about that. And now I'm thinking I might want to leave that off anyway, because all the liquids go that direction and they just would build up behind that piece of metal anyway and that's probably why it rusted out so bad down there. I'm tempted to just leave that off and that way that can get air and dry out and we can clean it out better. I'm going to give that some thought before I weld this together though and, and make it permanent. Bye. 